G'day everyone! In this video I'm going to be building the bed in my bus. Now I'm just building a very basic slat base design that's actually going to be extendable so the bed will be able to pull out from a sofa kind of size during the day out to almost a double size bed at night and this is not an original design there's a ton of videos on YouTube showing how people have done all kinds of variations on this design but in this video I'm going to share with you how I did my version of this bed and I'm also going to share some tips that I learned to help make the bed a lot easier to pull out and make the whole thing just work a bit more smoothly. This is where I'm going to be building the bed. It's right at the front of the bus, directly opposite the side entrance door and it'll basically go from this wall down towards the kitchen in the centre of the bus. And this is the basic design for my bed. Now you're going to have to excuse my very rudimentary uh, diagrams here because I don't have any kind of design background or uh, skills using SketchUp or any of those other programs that people seem to use. So this is just my very basic drawing but uh, it makes sense to me and hopefully it will give you some idea of what I'm going to try and build. So the basic design of the bed is it's going to be a very simple slat base bed and it's actually going to be in two sections so this main section here will be fixed so it will be screwed into the floor of the bus into the wall behind it and also into that wall that I recently built at the front and so this will all be fixed and then there'll be a second section which will consist of this bit at the front and a sliding rail on the top of this fixed section and that will have slats on it as well but this section this sliding section will be able to be pulled in and out which will extend the width of the bed so basically during the day the bed will be about 750 mil wide and will act as a kind of day bed or a sofa and then at night I'll be able to pull out this front section and it'll actually extend the bed out to about 1200 mil so it's almost as big as a double size bed not quite but it's plenty big enough for Pepper and I so the plan is that the bed will have these four main supports and two long rails that will be going on top of those and then my slats will sit on top of those rails in the fixed section um, and then this front section also has four supports two long rails and then the slats of the sliding section will be screwed from this front piece here onto a sliding rail um, that'll be between these two fixed rails. Hopefully it'll make more sense when I start to build it and you can actually see what it's like in 3D. Um, the other thing I'm going to be doing with this bed, I've designed it so that it'll, it will fit some big storage containers that I have so that I'll be able to slide in and out of these sections under the bed. I'm going to have to build a false floor on these two sections here because underneath the floor of the bus here there'll actually be a grey water tank and when that's installed there's going to be four bolts sticking out of the floor here and if I was just to leave them and not put a, a little floor over the top those bolts sticking out would kind of interfere with me being able to slide my storage containers in and out so I'm just going to put uh, a, just slightly raise the floor in these two sections just enough to clear the top of the the bolt heads and so that I've got a nice flat floor I'll be able to slide my storage containers out I'm not going to actually put that floor in until after I've installed the water tank obviously but I'll at least put the um, the rails down for it so yeah so that's the basic plan and I've worked out what size timber I'm going to use for each piece and I've got my cutting list here with all the different lengths that I need to cut so I can go ahead and cut all those and then I'll be ready to put it together One down, three to go. 
Okay, so I've now got four of these supports. As you can see, I ended up putting another piece in the middle just to give it a little bit extra bracing and support. It's probably overkill because it was fairly sturdy before, but these four pieces are going to be the main supports for the fixed part of the bed. So they need to be able to support a decent amount of weight. Um, so these are super sturdy now. I think an elephant could sit on that and it wouldn't break. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I've got four of those, and now I can go ahead and put them in the bus. running across lengthways. So the two long rails are just screwed straight down onto the tops of my four supports. But for this rail at the back, I'm also using pocket holes to secure the rail into four studs that I've got behind this plywood wall. Okay, so this is as far as I got yesterday. I finished the basic um, structure of the fixed part of the bed. So if I pull this section out, you can see here that all of this here is all fixed, like rigidly to the floor, to the walls of the bus and so on. It's not going anywhere. Um, and then I've got this separate front section here that just sits in front like that. So what will happen is every second slat will be screwed onto the fixed um, piece like this, screwed onto there. This can slide underneath it. And then every other slat will be screwed to this one and also to the front section. So the idea is that I'll be able to pull out this front section and this will come with it. I hope you can kind of get a sense of this. So yeah, so that's the idea of how this will work. It'll make more sense when the slats are screwed in and I'll be able to move it more easily. You'll be able to see, but that's, that's the plan. So every second slat gets screwed to the fixed rails and every slat in between those gets screwed to these two sliding rails. There's a ton of videos on YouTube showing all kinds of ways that people have built beds very similar to this design. But one of the things that I've noticed about a lot of them and one of the particular challenges with a bed like this is that some of them are very stiff to pull out because what happens is once all these slats are screwed down then sometimes it can be quite hard when you're pulling the the sliding section out that there can be a lot of friction between the slats on that, are, that are, you're trying to slide and the fixed part of the bed and that can sometimes make it a bit stiff and difficult to move. Um, but I want to share with you a few tricks that I've learned from watching other people's videos that will hopefully reduce that friction and make it a little bit easier to move the bed in and out. So the first thing you'll notice is that this rail here, my sliding rail that will actually go um, underneath the fixed slats, You'll, you can see that there's actually a little bit of clearance. This rail is not the same height as these rails. So for the fixed rails here, I've used 35 mil thick pine. Um, and this piece here is only 30 mils. So when they're all resting on this same cross beam here, this one you can see actually sits um, a few mil lower down. And the reason for that is that when you've got these slats screwed onto the fixed part of the bed, there's a, there's a gap underneath there so it can slide freely. Whereas if you imagine if it was pushed right up against there and I'm trying to slide it out, there'd be a bit of friction. You know? And if you can imagine there'd be friction on every single one of those slats and it would be hard to, for that rail to slide. So by having that little gap there, it just gives us a lot more space to slide uh, freely. If I was to screw the slat directly onto that, then it's going to be touching this fixed rail here as it tries to slide, and I can get some friction happening in there as well. So the way to get around that, and I saw a gentleman on YouTube do this with his bed, and I thought it was a fantastic idea, is to put a little spacer underneath the slat, 
like so on each end and that way it just creates a little bit of a gap there. I'm actually probably going to put two of these washers at this end because I do have that extra little bit of clearance there and I want these slats to be roughly the same height. Again, just creates a tiny little air gap uh, there uh, between the slat and this fixed rail so that when this slides out, it's actually not, um, not getting caught by friction uh, on this because again you can imagine if every single one of these rails was just rubbing on that a little bit it could get quite tricky to pull out so hopefully just creating that little bit of space with these washers just means that there's a little bit of clearance there and hopefully that will help it to slide more smoothly so I've got all my slats here ready to go it's time to put them on So I've got my first sliding slat screwed on now and you can see with those washers you can actually see how there's a tiny gap between the slat and this fixed rail so that when it's sliding in and out it's not actually touching that rail so there's not any friction happening there that could get it caught. So I'm just using a scrap piece of 3mm ply here just to act as a spacer between the slats so that as I screw them down so I know that they've each got a little gap between them and that that gap's nice and even the whole way along the length. I just made my spacer a little bit smaller so it's easier to work with. Okay, so I've made a mistake here and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it easily on the camera but um, as I've been screwing these in I think this front either this front section or this sliding rail has moved this way a little bit because as you can see now the further along I'm going my slats I don't know if you can see that but they're not square and if I was to keep going like this, as I got further and further along, the angle would get greater and the risk is then, because they're not straight, that it's not going to pull out. So I need to fix it. Um, I don't think it's a problem yet, um, because this does still slide, but obviously I can't keep going the way it is. I can't really move these over just a fraction because they would make too big a screw hole and they'd be too loose so I'm just going to see how it goes leaving the ones I've done but I'm obviously going to fix this now so that it's square for the rest of the length of the bed and before I go any further I've clamped it all together which is what I should have done at the start so I've got the front section clamped on so it can't move and I've also got this rail here clamped on so it can't move so yeah that was a rookie mistake uh, lucky I picked that up then and not when I got right to the end of the bed so yeah just make sure you've got everything clamped together so that the sliding sections can't actually move at all as you're doing this because it's very important that these stay as straight as possible especially given that you can tell I only have a few millimeters clearance between each one so it's pretty tight anyway hopefully this will work I'll get the next one square and we'll take it from there slats in and as you can see that I haven't left a lot of clearance between each one there's only like literally three mil gap um, between each of these slats the reason for that is when the bed comes out in the section you know you can already see here there's going to be this much gap between the slats on each half of the bed so the wider you make the slats and the wider the gap you have in between them when the bed's extended the bigger this gap is and if this gap is too big you actually feel it 
through the mattress which can be uncomfortable but also it's not good for the mattress if it's sagging down in the gap so you want to keep these gaps as narrow as you possibly can I'm using 42 by 19 mil pine for my slats I didn't want to go any narrower than that hopefully that'll be alright I think I've got a nice balance there but it does mean that it's pretty tight so as I said you have to make sure that you're keeping the slats nice and square and that everything's straight when you haven't got a lot of clearance to deal with. <laughs> awesome! <laughs> it's actually, it actually works. So that's coming in and out really easily. I'm hardly having to pull on that at all. So I'm very happy with that. And this is how it's going to work when I've got the mattresses in. So I actually had these mattresses custom made from Macon Mattresses. And I highly recommend them. They weren't cheap, but they're really good quality, super comfortable. And the service that I got from Macon Mattresses from the minute I walked into the store until the day I picked up the mattresses was excellent. I highly recommend them if you're wanting to get custom made mattresses. They'll make the mattresses to any size so this is the day mode for my bed um, and it's actually perfect size for me it's super comfortable I'm quite tall so this is just the perfect length um, for me and so I'll be able to use this as a sofa kind of day bed during the day and then at night this out of the way, I'll be able to pull the bed out and the two mattresses will drop down together like that.